In the 1950s, the Lower Hill District was a vibrant, diverse community, home to Pittsburgh's most popular clubs and artists, while East Liberty was a thriving business center. Forty years later, both cities were nearly unrecognizable, victims of poorly planned urban renewal projects. These failures act as cautionary tales against urban renewal, proving that quickly attempting to fix everything often results in fixing nothing. Before its redevelopment, the Hill District was famously a hot spot for people of all races to come, have fun, and listen to jazz music. Nicknamed Little Harlem, the area was a place for black and whites alike to go out and enjoy the nightlife. The Crawford Grill, the Hurricane Lounge, and the new Ganada Theater were only a few of the highly popular clubs among both communities. Despite its popularity, the city quickly became a blighted area due to its poorly designed and upheld buildings. A study showed that nearly one third of the homes in Lower Hill were either unfit to live in or needed major repairs. The report also claimed that 60% of the dwellings needed major repairs or lacked private indoor bathrooms. In the late 1940s, the U.S. Supreme Court gave redevelopment authorities the power of eminent domain to acquire properties that they deemed blighted. The Lower Hill District fit the description of blight perfectly. Within the district, there were 1,600 families crowded into only 100 total sections of property. Joe Trotter, a professor at Carnegie Mellon, described the Lower Hill District as filled with disease and overcrowded crime-breeding houses. In 1956, a redevelopment plan constructed by Mayor George Evans was approved. The goal of the plan was to revamp the Lower Hill District. The district was planned to become the site of the city's new cultural center, which would go on to be known as the Civic Arena. Later that year, a conference about urban design was held in the city. The city was broken up into several different sections and given space designated for each section. 20 total acres were designated for new apartment complexes and future endeavors in the city, while 40 total acres were designated for the Civic Arena and other miscellaneous commercial use. To clear the space, over 1,000 buildings and homes in the area were destroyed. This led to a housing crisis due to the lack of space, displacing nearly 8,000 families, two-thirds of them African American. These suddenly homeless families were forced to scramble and find new places to live and quickly. While this was happening, another redevelopment project was taking place nearby in East Liberty. While the Hill District underwent construction in hopes that it would bolster activity in the area, East Liberty had a far different problem. It was experiencing too much activity. Home to 600 local businesses and a train station that serviced over 100 trains a day, East Liberty soon earned the nickname Pittsburgh's Second Downtown. Despite all of its success, East Liberty had been experiencing a consistent decrease in population. More and more white families fled to the suburbs in a case of white flight, which led to an increase in production of suburban shopping centers. These large and lavish shopping centers gave these families little reason to make the trip back to East Liberty. To reclaim their lost clientele, East Liberty began plans on their own center that would compete with the ones in the suburbs. In 1960, the city granted $7.6 million to the East Liberty Renewal Program. Nearly a million feet of space was cleared for the project, forcing hundreds of local businesses to close their doors. The city also began construction on the Penn Circle, a traffic loop with the primary function of accommodating families traveling back to East Liberty from the suburbs. Constructed to mimic the roads in the suburbs, the Penn Circle was made up of a series of one-ways that would have pedestrians park on the streets and walk around the business section of the area. But shoppers were turned off by the lack of car access and the Penn Circle ended up driving away more business than it brought in. Despite the early troubles, Pittsburgh was still confident about the success of the East Liberty Project. In a speech before City Council, Charles Schwartz, the president of the East Liberty Chamber of Commerce stated, As you travel through East Liberty today, you see the dawn of a new era, characterized by new housing units completed under construction, new concrete streets, handsome by any standard, 
Discouragement, despair, and difficulty are slowly being replaced in East Liberty by encouragement, confidence, and a brilliant hope. The city also began plans to construct lavish apartments for the families to live in who were returning from the suburbs. Unfortunately for the city of Pittsburgh, the 8,000 people displaced by the project in the Hill District did not simply disappear and still needed homes. President Johnson's Housing and Community Development Act made the city of Pittsburgh responsible for building new homes for the people displaced in Lower Hill. So instead of the original plan to build lavish apartments on those spaces, the city of Pittsburgh was forced to build low-income housing projects for the displaced families. In the late 60s, the city of Pittsburgh began construction on three high-rise public housing units, the East Mall, the Penn Circle Towers, and the East Liberty Park. Because of this, the new shopping center became a financial disaster. Most of the stores in the shopping center featured high-end products that could be afforded by upper and middle class families, but not by the lower class families living nearby in the housing projects. This was not immediately a cause of concern for the city. While the influx of low income families was not ideal, the city was still counting on shoppers pouring in from the surrounding suburban areas. However, East Liberty quickly became known as a blighted area due to another unforeseen consequence of President Johnson's Housing and Community Development Act. The act encouraged the public housing units to be owned privately instead of by the government. Because of this, the housing complexes, which were already poorly built, fell deeper and deeper into disrepair as complaints by the residents were largely ignored by the complex's private landlords. Most affected by these changes was Pittsburgh's African American community. In 1970, the year that construction on the complexes was completed, African Americans made up only one-fifth of East Liberty's population. A decade later in 1980, African Americans accounted for almost half of the area's residents. Despite their overwhelming majority in the area, the African American community was unable to transition East Liberty into a vibrant, culture-filled entertainment destination that once had a home in the Hill District. The complexes were scattered around town, fracturing the African American community, leaving them isolated. The fracturing of the community, along with poor living conditions, led to a substantial increase in crime in East Liberty from 1973 to 1975. East Liberty's growing reputation as a violent area severely damaged the new shopping center's chances of succeeding financially. A local business owner who owned a store in the mall said, People were afraid to even go near the East Mall because of crime and things like residents tossing garbage and dirty diapers out the window. The shopping center was not the only business that struggled. East Liberty, once known for their large amount of local businesses, saw the number drop from 575 in the 1950s to fewer than 100 by the end of the 1970s. In 1974, East Liberty reported a total volume of 45 million, down from a previous peak of 90 million. The district also reported a decrease in population from 15,000 in 1960 to around 10,000 in 1974. In the span of 14 years, the urban renewal project that was intended to boost the district's economy and population instead resulted in a dramatic decrease in both. The project only succeeded in increasing crime and poverty in the area. 